Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Fundamental Analysis Webinar here with Abitrade. My name is Troy. I'll be presenting. As we get started, let's do a quick systems check. If you would, uh, just type OK in the chat box if you're hearing me clearly and seeing my screen all right. OK, great. Looks like we're up and running fine. If anyone has any issues as we go along, feel free to let me know. As always, keep in mind that there's risk involved with each trade that you take. Uh, there's no guarantee of profits on any trade, obviously, and you should manage risk uh, in a way that makes sense for you. Uh, in that regard, we'll go over some tools that assist with risk management within the session uh, as we simulate some different trade sequences. Uh, it really makes the risk management side of things easier when using our web trader and app to place your trades. And keep in mind what we go over is not meant to be financial advisement, but is coming from an educational perspective. Now, real quick from our main website, uh, if you were trading via mobile, uh, you can find our app with links to the major app stores under our trading platform section. Just go to the Avitrade app page and you'll find links to the Google Play app store and the Apple app store. And what's nice about our app and web trader is that you can trade on the MT4 and MT5 accounts from one location. You can switch between them. Uh, and all of the tools that you'll see in this session within the web trader are also available in our app. Now, if you log in from the upper right corner here on our website, you'll be in the web trader. And our focus today is fundamental analysis. We'll obviously take into account the technicals a bit on the chart as well, because uh, the fundamental analysis and technical analysis really go hand in hand. Uh, as as part of a, a, a well-rounded strategy, but we'll focus a bit heavier on the fundamentals today. Uh, there are some some pretty significant announcements today and tomorrow, uh, largely out of the U.S. and the U.K. Uh, we'll take a look at these upcoming announcements on the economic calendar. And if you haven't used our economic calendar in the past, uh, what you'll see is that it has some advanced tools built into it that your average economic calendar does not have. And so if we want to first look at what's upcoming today, uh, you'll see a number of announcements already came in. Uh, for anyone who's brand new to using an economic calendar, basically you're looking at the country that the announcement is from uh, and what the forecast data is and what when the actual data comes in, how does it compare to what was expected? And this column over here in the far right shows the prior numbers that came in the last time there was an announcement on, on each topic. And the, the forecast column is in the middle. And then the actual numbers come in in this column here uh, when the time reaches the scheduled time. And so as we scroll down on our economic calendar, if you get below this red line, it means the announcements have not occurred yet. And so we have some upcoming announcements. Uh, you know, typically a rate decision is pretty big news. And uh, th there's an interest rate decision coming out of uh, the UK in, in a short period of time. And the expectation is that the rate will be held the same. Now that might not garner too much excitement, uh, but you know, rate decisions are important. And many times it's not you know, what they do, because many times we already expect the rate uh, to stay the same, or if, if it's going to be increased, we already know that they're saying they're going to increase it and people are predicting that. Uh, so right now the expectation is that the rate will stay the same. Now, if it comes in lower than expected or higher than expected, if they do lower it or raise it, uh, then I would expect more of a reaction on the charts. But let's, let's take a look and see what kind of reaction has occurred in the past if the rate comes in as expected or different than expected, rather than guessing what will happen. And so this is the power of data analysis, is being able to get a handle on, you know, the last time there was a rate decision or the last times over the past year, let's say, what has the chart done? And so if we take a look using these tools off to the right, and I'll click on the volatility tool, if, if, we want to pick a currency pairing first that we're interested in trading on. It could be the GBP USD, could be any GBP pairing that we offer. I'll leave it on the GBP USD. Uh, and we can pick different time frames. I'll start out on the longest time frame, which is four hours. You can go as little as five minutes. And then you choose the qualification of how the event came in. 
Do you want all all of the announcements on on GDP or I mean on interest rates over the past year or so, or do you only want the ones that came in higher than expected or lower than expected, uh, or only the ones that matched the forecast? Okay, we can qualify it. So you know if we look at uh, matching the forecast, which is what happens most often. As I kind of alluded to, you don't get a very predictable movement. Uh, you don't get a big run statistically in one direction or the other. When the, when the interest rate decision comes in as expected, you see in this case, it's 50% up, 50% down. And the distances are equal as well. You know, the largest move down is almost the same as the largest move up. The number of moves down are equal. The smaller moves up are similar to the size of the smaller moves down. So this is truly 50-50, not just in directionality, but also in distances. It's very equal in both directions when the rate decision matches the forecast. So what that tells me is I don't gain a statistical advantage to know which way to trade if, if the rate decision comes in, in this case at five and a quarter percent as expected, then I'm probably not interested in trading off of that uh, unless I'm trading maybe on a ranging pattern where it goes up and back down, down and back up, because you don't see a big run in one direction with, with a huge number of pips uh, consistently in one direction. OK, so this is one that the statistics don't give me a statistical advantage in terms of the percentage or the, the distance of movement uh, in one direction compared to the other when it matches the forecast. Uh, so if it comes in matching forecast, I might sit this one out based on these statistics. Now, uh, what if it comes in and they unexpectedly lower the interest rate? What if it comes in below forecast and they lower it maybe to 5% instead of keeping it at five and a quarter? Well, if it comes in below forecast, 100% of the time it went down, but it only happened once. Okay, so that's not a lot of data points. Uh, and the movement down doesn't look dramatic. It was about 50 pips, 52, 53 pips, which is pretty significant, but it's only happened once. And in statistics, when you only have one data point, it, it's not so meaningful. And so, uh, you know, if this happened four or five times and, you know, 80% of the time it went down, then I would feel like it means something more. But 100% down, but it only happened once, it doesn't mean so much statistically. If we go above forecast, it's the same thing. It only happened once. Now you had a, a larger move down. So this tells me, uh, you know, maybe there would be more momentum for a sell off if it came in above forecast compared to below. Uh, but we just don't have a lot of data points with that situation above forecast. Again, it only happened once. So this particular announcement, it doesn't, the, the past data doesn't stick out to be something where you can say, wow, if it comes in one way or another, statistically, it really shows a strong tendency in one direction or the other. It's just not there on this announcement, okay? So uh, this one, in terms of trading on the past statistics from the announcements, I, I would sit this out in the rate decision based on those, those data points that we looked at. Now, if we go down to the jobless claims out of the US, maybe this one has stronger statistics. And so this is a process you can do on Saturday, Sunday, uh, when the market's not moving even, and uh, pick out which announcements seem to give you the strongest statistical advantage to trade off of based on the past movements on the qualified conditions of how, how the numbers came in. So let's leave it on Euro USD four hours after the event. And it's 50-50 if I do all events. But uh, if this comes in, below forecast or above forecast, is, is there a significant difference? So if I say above forecast, two thirds of the time it went up. If I say below forecast, 57% of the time it went down. And, and this is interesting. Sometimes you look at this and you say, you know, it's, it's almost 50-50, 57, 43. It's not like it's 80% of the time it went down uh, or 90%. It's only 57% compared to 43. Uh, but what I see as significant here is not only is it a higher percentage down when this when the jobless numbers come in below forecast, but it's a much larger movement down when it went down. And so 80% of the color here between green and red is down. So while it's only 57% 
directionality down, three of them went up. The ones that went up went up very, very little compared to the amount of red we see on the downward movements. So uh, I always like to see both a percentage of the occurrences in the direction that I might want to trade, but also the mass of movement in that direction as well. And both of those mean something. So the movements up capped out at about uh, 16 pips, largest movement up. The largest movements down were 60, almost 60 pips, 55, 56 pips, okay? So uh, largest movement up was maybe one third or one fourth of the size of the largest movement down. So the ones that went against the larger percentage moved smaller and the ones that went in the direction of the larger percentage, 57% of the time, moved on average much larger in a downward move. So this one I would be looking, okay, if this comes in below forecast, I probably would make a move on this if I get the entry point I want. I'm expecting 45 pip range movement based on these statistics. So if in the first five minutes, let's look after five minutes, if in the first five minutes I can catch an upward move or a downward move that moves very little, Many of these were less than five pips uh, down and, and were even up. So if I can make that move in the first five minutes after I see the data, in this case, coming in below forecast, then after four hours, most of the movement in the past was way lower than where it was after five minutes. Okay. And so that's the sort of thing I'm looking for with the statistics that I can see the data first. And within those first five minutes, get an entry point that makes sense for where I would expect it, statistically speaking, to be after four hours. And I know how far I would put my take profit based on this range movement and how far back I would need a stop loss for it to break this pattern and, and, and then get out with a small loss potentially if it did break this pattern that we see here. Okay. What if it comes in above forecast? Okay. We looked at that and it's two thirds of the time up, but look how small the upward movements were. Sure, it went up two out of three times. It's actually a better percentage than the downward movements, but look at the size movement. You can add the two together that went up and they don't equal the one that went down. So yeah, it only went down one third of the time, but it went down a lot more than it went up. So uh, it doesn't have both the percentage and the mass of movement in your favor together. It only has the percentage in this case in your favor, but boy, were those weak movements to move so little after four hours, and the one that went down went down double either of those upward movements, okay? So I actually would pass on the upward trade here unless I got a really nice spike down in the first five minutes, okay? And in this case, the movement was up the majority of the time in the first five minutes and ended up down, uh, more than up on the one that dropped compared to the ones that went up, okay? So you can see how you can start to dissect these statistics and find the direction of the announcement that you think you have the best statistical advantage. And sometimes it's in both directions. You'd say, if it comes in one way, I'll sell. If it comes in the other way, I'll buy. Some of the announcements look that way and others, like the first one we looked at the, the, out, of, out of Great Britain, Neither of the directions looked statistically nice, and so we'd pass completely on it. Uh, and in some cases, you pick only one direction, like this one, I would be leaning towards if it comes in below forecast, potentially selling if I get the entry point that I like. And you see, I'm, I'm not dissecting the why. Why would it drop? Do I agree that it should have dropped if it came in below forecast, et cetera? I, I'm not doing that. I, I'm just looking and, and looking at, at the data and using data-driven trade. I'm taking my thought process out of it and going purely on statistics from the past data, okay? Now you can take that next step and say, only if the data is in my favor and I agree in my mind that with you know that those numbers coming in below forecast that it makes sense it should drop. And, and you can qualify it that way as well if you wish. But a uh, true data-driven trading is exactly what we just looked at. Uh, looking which way would you have a st statistical significance uh, and advantage uh, based on the past and, and then trying to ride that statistical advantage to see if that works out moving in the future. And you don't just try it once, right? Remember I said one data point 
Uh, I, I, it doesn't give me confidence. But if I try it 10 times, uh, I'm hoping that I, I profit more times than I don't uh, in the end. Any questions, comments on, on the use of this tool so far? I'll pause uh, for a moment. Okay, and if I see any questions pop up as I go along, I'll, I'll address them as I see them. Uh, we can take a look at tomorrow. There's another set of announcements. Pretty much each day there are. Mondays tend to be more quiet in terms of announcements, but as we get to Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, they seem to be more announcement heavy. Uh, we see GDP numbers coming out of Great Britain. Uh, we see industrial production numbers coming out. You know, if we look at the industrial production numbers, this is a, a good peek at how, how well is the economy doing. Uh, you know, four hours after the event and GBP USD in the past, how were the movements? If this comes in above forecast, 67% of the time, the USD strengthens against the pound, okay? And, and the, not only is it two-thirds of the time drops compared, compared to one-third of the time it went up, it dropped further on each of those times than the ones that went up. So it's two-thirds of the time down and larger movements down than the ones that went up. So uh, a, a greater percent chance that it'll drop, and if it does, a greater chance that it'll drop further than the ones that go up, okay? And that's what we see here if these numbers come in above forecast. And you might say, well, why would that happen? You know, you start asking the why, uh, you know, industrial production above forecast, meaning better than expected, why in the world would the pound weaken against the USD two thirds of the time? You'd think the pound would strengthen if the production was better than expected. And that's where you can get into trouble uh, if you're trying to follow data-driven trading, but then also trying to justify in your mind why it went one way or the other, uh, those two things sometimes can conflict, okay? Maybe the movement strengthened because people were expecting good factory numbers, and, and prior to the announcement, the strengthening already occurred. So when the numbers came in, you have the opposite movement than you might expect. And so the data-driven trading, you, you would have profited more than you, more than you would have lost, but if you were trading based on what you think should happen, higher than expected numbers so the pound should strengthen, then you would have lost two thirds of the time because it actually went the opposite direction statistically when you look at the past than what you might logically have thought it should have done, okay? And this can be the power of data-driven trading. Trading in the way that the statistics show you should rather than your brain tells you you should, okay? But you can do both. You can only trade if your brain and the statistics align. Sometimes I do that. I'll say, you know what? It, it, I know it shows it drops, but I think it should go up when the numbers are better than expected. So I'll sit this one out, right? Uh, but you know, truly data-driven trading, you don't do that. You follow the data. Uh, what if this comes in below forecast? 50-50, okay? Now the movements up were larger. Look how big the upward movements were compared to the downward movements. Three of them went up and three went down, but there was more upward movement than down size-wise, okay? Points of movement. If I add together the, the pips of movement on these three, it, it will equal more than the three that went down. So yeah, it's 50-50, but there was more upward movement than downward. And so this is acting in opposite fashion. So there is a relationship we see here. There's more upward movement when the numbers are below expectation. And when they're above expectation, there's more downward movement, okay? It's not a huge statistical advantage. It's not 80% to 20%, but it is there. There's a relationship that we see in the statistics. And if after the first five minutes, you can catch a spike up like this one, and you know the statistics show that after four hours, Two thirds of the time it's down. So you catch the high points or at least one that didn't drop yet. And after four hours, the majority of them are down further. Okay. So this is something that can really use statistics to hopefully work to your advantage uh, to win more points movement, more pips movement in the right direction, and hopefully statistically win as well percentage-wise, but really in the end, it's more points of movement of profit than loss, okay? Sometimes you can win 
40% of your trades, but still be in profit because your stop loss based on these ranges could be a shorter distance to your stop loss and a longer distance to your take profit. So even less than 50% win percentage still can be profitable, okay? And these statistics help you set up not only directionality, but how far would your stop loss and take profit need to be to be within these ranges, okay? Uh, very powerful information that's here at your fingertips that would take literally hours or days to compile all of that past data from the past movements with those past announcements. If you had to do that on your own, here within a few clicks, you have all of that data there, all of those statistics compiled for you. Now, if, if we go down, there are other announcements, manufacturing, production numbers, other things we can look at. Uh, the Canadian announcements many times garner really nice movements. Uh, we've got employment change numbers coming in, employment rate. These are high level announcements. So again, we can quickly see, is there a big advantage above forecast, 50-50 movement. Below forecast, 60-40 movement. It's not 80-20, it's not 75-25. It's closer to 50-50 and, and the size of the movements aren't very different from each other either. So that's not one I'd be so interested in, in necessarily trading on. We've got Michigan consumer sentiment out of the US. Above forecast, 60 to 40. So there's an advantage to buy. And also this is the quality that I'm looking for, larger upward movements in that 60% direction and smaller movements down in the 40% direction. So not only do you have a statistical advantage that it should go up more than it goes down, but when it goes up, it should go up more than it does when it goes down. So you have two advantages in the upward direction when this comes in above forecast. Below forecast, exactly the same, but the opposite direction. Below forecast, not a huge statistical advantage, but it is there, goes down more than it goes up when this is below forecast, and the downward movements are larger than the upward movements, okay? So something like 80% movement down and 20% movement up if you add all of the reds together compared to the greens. So yeah, it only went down 57% of the time, but when it did, it went down a lot more than the ones that went up. So this one looks like a nice one that has a relationship in both directions showing a pure relationship that if it comes in one way, it's down. If it comes in the other way, it's up. Okay, those types of relationships show themselves more clearly when you can see if it comes in one way, it's one direction, and the other way, it's the other direction. So I see a couple announcements from today and tomorrow, maybe three or four in total, uh, that really seem to have a lot of potential for data-driven trading. Some of them only in one direction, some of them in both directions. Okay, so you can start to look at other announcements too when the CPI data comes out. The PPI data, you know, the, the inflationary data, consumer pricing index, uh, the producer uh, pricing index, et cetera. Some of those you'll see even bigger statistical uh, significance, the, the 80, 20 percent, 75, 25, and with larger movements in the direction uh, of, of 75 percent, let's say, and smaller movements. We're talking sometimes 100 pip movements, okay, and the range movement in those four hour windows. So. Keep your eye on these announcements. Each week go through, and some weeks have larger announcements than others with even larger statistical advantages from the past. So uh, it's really something you can get off five, 10, 15 trades a week just with this one strategy. And after a month of doing it, take a look which announcements had the better results for you statistically. Maybe you focus on those in the second month that you try it and, and zero in on the announcements that give you the best results. Okay, and give it some time, obviously. Don't give up after one or two tries and think, oh, well, that announcement's no good, I lost. Uh, you try it 10 times, maybe the first two you lost, but you win six out of 10 or seven out of 10. Okay, uh, all right, so that's one tool that uses fundamental news, one type of fundamental news, but not everything is scheduled, right? We don't always have a scheduled announcement with numbers that come in at an exact time. Sometimes the fundamental news is a headline that you can't predict when it will come or what it will be, okay? So for that type of news, we have a couple places you can look. You could go to the market buzz, okay? And we'll take a look at the market buzz now.
Okay, good question. So, uh, Sean, it, it, it looks like uh, you logged in and out a couple times. I don't know if you're having connection issues, uh, but you're asking about other time frames other than the four hour and the five minute that we're looking at. You certainly can use other time frames as well. Maybe you prefer to trade in a one hour window and you look at the four hour, the one hour, the 30 minute, the five minute in, in that tool on the economic calendar. And, and maybe you see better statistics in the one hour than the four hour. And then you're going to sit and watch that trade for an hour and close it when, when it's at a price you like, if it doesn't hit the, the take profit or stop loss. So uh, you can make that tool your own. Okay. The reason I was showing five minute and four hour within this session is because you get dramatic differences. In the first five minutes, the movement's just getting going. And after four hours, it's exhausted itself as far as I can show you because the tool only goes four hours, doesn't go longer than that. But you could play around with those time frames in the middle as well. Good question. Okay, so uh, this tool is called the Market Buzz, and it will list instruments with bigger circles if they're trending more. Okay, so ART Incorporated is trending like crazy now. 1,207, you might not even have heard of that before. But we offer it on our MT5 platform. And so you can see what's going on with this stock. What is this company? So I, I click on that big bubble in the pictogram. I see a number of things with this display once it loads. Uh, you'll see uh, information about, uh, you know, is, is the stock in this case expected to rise or drop? And let's see if the data will load. It also shows you the actual articles that have been found that are talking about that instrument. Okay, maybe we'll, we'll click on something different. TripAdvisor. See if this one wants to load for us. There it is. Uh, so whatever it is you see, and, and so we clicked on one that was trending largely, uh, and this one, TripAdvisor incorporated and we see it right away we see a trend analysis so remember i said you can combine the technical analysis with the fundamental okay and so whatever it is you're about to trade on you see on the calendar we already did that the economic calendar showed you the chart showed you the pips movement so we're combining technical analysis with those fundamental news announcements here we can do the same thing so we have a trend analysis for TripAdvisor. it's expected to drop over 12 percent we click on the trend analysis. It shows you the support and resistance levels. It shows you the pivot line, meaning if it goes above that pivot line, they'll say don't sell. As long as it stays below this resistance level, it's still a sell signal in this case. And the expectation is near 12% drop down to this price range down here where the red lines are. So this is the suggested take profit area. So you've got the technical analysis here showing support and resistance levels you've got the fundamental news right here as well. So right at your fingertips, uh, TripAdvisor target of unusually high options trading. Okay, that's interesting. All of a sudden the volume of trading went up on TripAdvisor and there's an expectation it'll drop 12%. So maybe there's gonna be some large movements on this instrument. You can click and read that article. Well, what's this about? Let me, let me see the whole article. There's a, there's a large surge in trading on TripAdvisor. So I can read an article and see what, what I can learn about that. And maybe there they talk about also expectation to drop or something. So as I read the articles on this instrument, uh, I can start to form my own fundamental news opinion that, yeah, I think this is probably bad news for this stock or good news. And, and then combine that with the technical analysis. And if, both agree that I can make my move. And I'm trading both, both on fundamental news that I just read that is coming out literally by the minute on, on this market buzz feature. And, and then also looking at the technical analysis signal along with it. And if everything agrees in, in your mind, then maybe you make the trade, okay? And it doesn't have to be just stocks. We can switch to cryptocurrencies, standard currency pairs, commodities, et cetera. And they, they're all working the same way. You can see, well, you know, why is natural gas or gold trending so much? Why is it one of the larger circles? Gold expected to drop 7%. Read some articles. You might read 
why it's expected to drop 7%, right? So a uh, very valuable tool that gets you information uh, quite quickly. I'm interested to see if this ART is going to load for us. That was a, a problem with this particular instrument because the others are loading just fine. The tool's working. It looks like the data's not actually here for ART Incorporated. Okay, could check later, maybe it'll be there. That's something from Trading Central. Uh, on occasion, certain instruments, maybe the data is, is delayed or something. But we certainly know it's trending a lot, so I, I may check back on it later today myself to see if I can see uh, some data coming in on that stock. But uh, Tesla, Microsoft, uh, Apple, they, they all have all kinds of information coming in, uh, literally by the minute. Look, Tesla expected to rise that. There's something going on here, right? 30%. Expected to go up over 30%. That is a huge expectation, a huge prediction. And you can see it gapped up a couple times already in the recent past. And the prediction is a lot further move up. Okay, so something's going on with Tesla. Uh, start to read the, the, the articles uh, and you might see what's going on with Tesla. I see that there's investigations into Elon Musk. There's uh, Tesla shares dip as U.S. prosecutors focus on potential securities and wire fraud. Okay, that's interesting. So maybe the, the expected rise is because there was a large drop because of that bad news. But you have to read the articles, look at the timing of the articles to the timing of the predicted rise and see if you agree or not. Okay. Uh, and if the news conflicts with the technical prediction, then maybe you don't trade, right? The news can do two things. It can convince you that you want to trade or it can convince you not to trade, right? So that information is there, uh, literally able to pull up in a, in, within seconds, information that, that might have taken you hours and hours to find uh, if you didn't have these tools here within the platform and within our app. Uh, I think this is a good spot to stop. We've been going for over a, a half an hour, uh, pushing 35 minutes. Any last questions, comments before before we end things today? One thing I did want to show you, if if we decided uh, to trade on something, may, maybe uh, you know it's gold or whatever it is that, that you read articles about and looked at signals on within our platform, you used a few tools on our platform, you decided you wanted to buy or sell on something. Uh, we've got special protection feature where you can protect your trade. You pay a small premium cost. You know, if I'm trading a half a lot on gold, uh, I can protect this trade by the hour, by the day, okay? Uh, if I take two days protection, today's Thursday, so that protects me through the trading day to Friday, that's one day, and all the way to Monday, that's two days. So I have all the way to Monday, risk-free, I pay the cost of the protection, then any movement, that's 50 ounces of gold, only take, what, about 12, $12 an ounce movement in the right direction already covers the cost of the protection. We've seen gold move 100 ounces in one day, you know, in, in a few hours even. So the potential for gold to give big profits is there. And the protection for a time period like from now all the way to Monday is the cost of a relatively small movement on gold, right? You know, and if you're trading smaller trade sizes, then the cost of the protection is obviously smaller. Relatively minuscule protection cost to carry me all the way to Monday with a two trading days protection. And I just have to pick what direction do I think it'll go. I, all the profits mine, if it goes the right way, if it goes the wrong way, any loss is paid back during the protected time period, okay? So this is a unique way to do protection. If the fundamental news tells you, oh, I think gold will go up. You know, the jobs numbers for the US last week were horrible. We've got more numbers coming out today out of the US. Uh, maybe there's reason for the USD to weaken against commodities like gold. And so you say, I'm going to take a shot between now and Monday uh, that, that gold will weaken. Or I mean that the USD will weaken and gold will go up. Maybe you think fundamentally there's reason for that to occur. You just don't think it will happen in the next hour. So you're afraid in the next hour or four hours it could go the wrong way. And you don't want to put a stop loss if you think it could go the wrong way first. But you also think it could take off the right way. So maybe I say, okay, I'm willing to risk 1% of my balance made. So if I do five, half a lot, that's less than 1% of my balance here. I could do 0 0.6, 0 
five, let's say, and now I'm risking about half, or 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 I should say one percent of my balance, close to one percent. Okay, uh, so for one percent risk or cost in this case, because I'm paying it up front for the protection, one percent, I have the potential profit, and and here's where I can calculate my potential profit. If gold goes up, let's say to uh, let's go to the larger candles, one day candles. If gold goes up to this resistance up here where it was before, that's around 2,400. So if I put my take profit at 2,395, so it doesn't have to break 2,400, I could make over $4,500. This protection costs me 600 and change. Okay? It's what a difference potential profit compared to the cost of this protection and now i can sit and wait till monday to see if it'll go up okay i don't have to be restricted to if it hits my stop loss i'm out because i'm not using a stop loss yet later i can add my stop loss and it will calculate what my risk is to my stop loss as well if i'm not using protection i'll use a stop loss and i know exactly how much i'm risking with my trade size okay and i'll increase the trade size until or decrease it until the possible loss is the amount I'm comfortable with. Okay. For now, I won't put a stop loss because I have Ava Protect. And I'm going to go ahead and buy on that. Okay. I have fundamental reason to think USD could start to weaken. The, the non farm payroll data last Friday was really bad. It showed a huge slowdown in jobs finally in the US. And that's what the US has been waiting for before they might lower interest rates. And so if now people think, wow, they might lower interest rates after all this year, uh, you could see the USD weaken and gold go up in response to in inflation fears again. So uh, if fundamentally that's how you felt, then the technical entry point is nice. The support level is close and the resistance level is much further away. So even if I wasn't using Ava Protect, if I put my stop loss below the support, and I take profit just before the resistance, it's a nice move even without Ava Protect, right? Uh, so you could do a move with Ava Protect without, do one of each if you want to diversify your risk management plan. I could have done half of my trade size with Ava Protect and half with a stop loss down here to diversify how I go after that movement. So you have some options here because of the tools that we have on our platform here at Ava Trade. So uh, when I said, our platform makes it easy to risk manage, to, to handle your risk management. I really meant it. It calculates for you if you're putting a stop loss, how much you're risking. You have the option to use Ava Protect on gold, silver, and FX pairings to manage risk in that unique way. Uh, so really with all of these tools, you should be able to build a nice trading strategy that combines fundamental news, technical analysis, and proper risk management. Okay. All right, everybody. Thank you for joining. Uh, my next session will be next week. Uh, Tuesdays, I do sessions at 6 p.m. UK time. And on Thursdays, it's at this time. Uh, if there's a holiday, something like that, then you might see uh, next week or the week after has a day that's missing. Uh, so then you just pick up the next week after that. Okay. All right, everybody. Thanks for joining. And, uh, Good luck with your trading the rest of the, the week. And uh, if you're making any of these moves we looked at, I wish you luck as well, okay? All right, bye for now, thanks for attending.